Well, let's let's stick with Europe then. And um, so we're recording, as I say, on Monday. And on Thursday, European leaders, sadly without the UK present, will be gathering for a, a summit. Um, and that's because the first attempt to secure 50 billion euro financing for Ukraine for the next few years was they failed to agree, not least because of the objections of Viktor Orban. So they sort of blow hot and cold as to whether they think they can get a deal done this time. Um, Orban, he, whether we like it or not, is a very, very powerful figure within these debates. Um, there is all sorts of talk about punishing Hungary in relation to some of their economic vulnerabilities, should he uh, block it yet again. Um, They've been making, the Hungarians have made one or two positive noises, but these are always matched then by going backwards. And, and that was that was followed a, a meeting of, um, Orban had a meeting of his parliamentary party in Budapest, Fidesz, and they then appear to have a, a much more hardline strategy. And I think part of the thinking is that Orban wants to use this. One, I don't think he likes Ursula von der Leyen very much and is trying to sort of, you know, undermine her and possibly stop her being able to go for a second term. Um, and the other thing is he wants this issue of Ukraine, he wants it to become, this goes to the point you just made, part of the debate in the European elections and hopes that it will drive up support of them, of the hard right, which seems to be fonder of Putin than it is of the European Union. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's odd that, isn't it? And it, it's got mm. a big read across to Trump too, because you can see the Republican base also beginning to to, to feel less sympathetic towards Ukraine. Yeah. I mean, all, the, the Hungarian economy is not in that great nick. So if if the European Union did play very, very hardball and, you know, Geir Hofstadt, who we interviewed on Leading a few weeks ago, he is one of the leading voices to say, you know, it's time to stop being so soft with Orban. Um, but, you know, Europe could do a lot of damage to the Hungarian economy with all this money that's being held. They've got this 20 billion euros that's locked up in something called the recovery and resilience resilience facility there are cohesion funds which they could they could hold back on um but they obviously do want to deal they want to deal because they want to commit long term to ukraine ukrainian uh, to spending for the ukrainians to in their support against russia and i think what orban's trying to do is to sort of block it or slow it down so that every time the spending has to be put forward you have to go back to have another agreement, which what they're looking for is a kind of three, four year plan. And it's it's not good news, this polling for, for Giva Hofstadt, who's the guy that we interviewed, um, because most of these parties are Eurosceptic parties. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they're absolutely not on the program that he's pushing for forever closer union. He They're very much more state rights, less involvement from Brussels. Um, mm. I mean, it, it feels increasingly as though Giva Hofstadt's vision of Europe is now feeling very kind of not part of the current moment. Not the yeah, but perseverance, space. Rory, perseverance. Keep going, uh, keep, keep going, keep going. <laughs> um, the other, maybe just to close, the other, the other idea that's doing the rounds amongst the European leaders, um, if Hungary really does play hardball, is that you can, there's something called Article 7.2, which means that you can, you can suspend the voting rights of a member only problem with that is that although the member under examination is not allowed to vote and therefore can't apply a veto, any of the other leaders can. And of course, we talked a few weeks ago about the election in Slovakia, another small country, um, and it's probable that the, prime, the new prime minister there um, would not necessarily go along with that should it get to that point. And, and, and I, I don't think... I, I'd be astonished if it got to that point. I think it would be a very mad thing to do against Orban. Mm. 